time your entry into options uh, because of the leverage. And uh, for the ETF option purchase strategy, we have three rules. We, we keep our first two rules, which is to select a sector with a high relative strength, and then we use the Keltner channels to find a low-risk entry to purchase an ETF call option. And then we have a third rule with option purchases, and we use what we call the 1% rule to select uh, the option strike price. So we use, for option purchases, we use our two basic uh, rules for entry. We select a sector with a high relative strength, and then we use the Keltner channels to help us find a low-risk entry. And then we have a third rule, um, and we use the 1% rule to select the option strike price. So options are derivatives, and they derive their uh, value from the price movement of the underlying stock. So we use the ETF relative strength to identify the ETFs moving up in price. So this allows us to profit from the uh, tremendous leverage that call options can provide. So if you can find a ETF that's moving up in price and you buy a call option, that call option, of course, is going to profit as the ETF uh, moves up in price. So let's look at a few uh, option trade examples. Uh, and again, we use the same uh, basic rule of we select a sector with a high relative strength, and we do that through um, ETFscreen.com. We log on to the website. Uh, click ETFs in the upper corner here, and then click RSF Trends, and that will display the ETFs with the highest relative strength at the top that are dark green in color, and that it'll, it'll rank them all the way to the bottom. And at the bottom, you'll see a, a light color, and you'll see a low relative strength. So we just like to focus on the ETFs with a uh, relative strength of 90 or higher. So let's look at um, the uh, Soxel ETF, that's the leveraged semiconductor ETF, and the symbol on that is SOXL. Uh, you can see that Soxel has a 99.5 relative strength rating, so it's uh, near the very top as far as relative strength. So those are the kind of ETFs we like to focus on. And in the Soxel ETF, the top holdings are Intel, Texas Instruments, Broadcom, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Micro, Micron Technology, LAM Research, et cetera. So these are the top holdings in the semiconductor uh, ETF. And if you want to participate in these stocks, it's easy to do by just buying the uh, Soxel uh, ETF, and then you participate in um, the, these various stocks in that sector. And then step number two, of course, is we use the Keltner channels to find a low-risk entry price uh, to purchase a call option. And we can see that um, Soxel, here's the daily price chart for Soxel with the Keltner channels, very strong price uptrend. And uh, we wanted to jump in on this uh, strong price uptrend, waited until uh, the Soxel traded down towards the lower Keltner channel. And then at the very end of November, uh, we bought the 140 strike call right here at 3590. Uh, Soxel uh, retraced a little bit from our entry, but then went back into a strong price uptrend. So we waited for a pullback. Uh, bought the 140, bought the 140 strike call at 3590 right in here. So that allowed uh, a low risk entry, um, and that that trade's doing well. Uh, here's another example. This is the Internet e uh, ETF FDN. Um, that's in the that's in, uh, has a 98 percent relative strength, so it's higher than 90. Very strong uptrend. Uh, so we bought an FDN uh, 
call option, and again, here's the um, the components of uh, the FDN, ETF, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, uh, Salesforce, PayPal, Google. So this is a very strong sector, um, and you can see it was in a strong price uptrend. So at the end of November, we waited for a retracement towards the middle Keltner channel, and we bought the 75 strike call at 32.90. So strong price uptrend. We want to participate with call options. Waited till the end of November till it retraced to the middle channel and bought the 75 strike call. And then uh, FDN continued its price move after our entry here. <clears throat> Here's one more example. This is for EDC, the Emerging Market uh, ETF. Uh, you can see a strong price uptrend. Uh, we waited for a retracement and uh, jumped in by buying uh, the EDC 107 strike call at 2155 right here. Uh, that gave us a low risk entry as the ETF uh, rallied in price after our entry. <clears throat> Here's one more example. This is for UDAL. This is the leveraged Dow Fund, Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we can see a very strong uptrend. Uh, we waited till uh, mid mid November, when it retraced towards the middle Keltner channel, and then bought the 55 strike call at 2610 right here, and then uh, the UDAL rallied after our entry price. So, in these examples, the um, Keltner channels resulted in low risk entries. And the ETFs didn't retrace much from the entry point. Okay, and then the third step in the ETF option trade selection is to use the 1% uh, rule to select the option strike price. And when you uh, buy an option, uh, depending on the ETF, there could be hundreds or even thousands of strike prices to choose from. So the question is, uh, which strike price do you choose out of these hundreds of uh, different strike prices if you're going to purchase an ETF call option? So selecting the uh, strike price can be just as important as the trade selection itself. So option premiums consist of time value and intrinsic value and options lose all time value at expiration. So when you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. So we always want to keep that in mind when we purchase a call option that each day that call option is going to lose a little bit of that time value, and then at expiration, there's no time value left. So you're buying a decaying, uh, you're buying a decaying asset whenever you purchase an option. So due to these time decay characteristics of options, when we buy an option, we want to uh, minimize the time value because it's going to go to zero, and we want to maximize the intrinsic value. And the way we do that is we use the 1% rule. And if you use the 1% rule, then you limit the time value portion of the option to less than 1% of the stock price. And if you do that, you're going to be minimizing the time value and, <clears throat> and maximizing the intrinsic value. So uh, <clears throat> as, a, as an example, if you purchase an option and the, and the ETF is trading at 100, you want to limit the time value portion of that option to one point or less. And that will <clears throat> allow you to limit the time value to 1% of the stock price. So a very simple rule, but a very good way to select an option strike price. So we want to uh, limit the time value portion of that option to uh, less than 1% of the stock price. So let's look at an actual ETF option purchase we made. Um, we bought the DVY, which is the dividend ETF, we bought the 70 strike call at 1170. So 
uh, bought to open, DBY, 70 strike call at 1170. Now, at the time, DBY was trading at 81.38. The ETF was trading at 81.38. So this would have been an in-the-money call as the 70 strike, 70 strike price was less than the current uh, ETF price. So ETF trading at 81.38, we're buying the 70 strike call. So that's an in-the-money call. <clears throat> and there's a very easy way to calculate the time value portion of an option. And if you take the um, ETF price at the time DBY was trading at 81.38, and if you subtract the call strike price, which was 70 in this example, from the uh, ETF price, you get the intrinsic value portion of that option. So subtract the strike price from the price the ETF was trading, and in this case, the intrinsic value portion of that option was 1138. And then if we take the total option premium, we paid 1170 for the option. So if we take the intrinsic value of 1138 and subtract it from the option premium of 1170, we get a time value portion of 32 cents. So the time value portion of the option was 32 cents, so you can see most of the value of this option was intrinsic value. And it, with the time value uh, portion at 32 cents, DBY only needs to increase 32 cents, or four-tenths of 1%, for, to, for this trade to break even and for the option to start profiting. So. Um, very important selecting this uh, strike price. Uh, in this case, we limited the time value portion to 32 cents, which was less than one half of 1% of the stock price. So um, DVY only had to increase 32 cents in value, and we would break even and start making money on this option. So um, here's our call option purchase calculator, which will calculate the profit potential for this option purchase uh, with DBY trading at 81.38. Uh, we purchased the 70 strike call at 11.70, and it will calculate the profit potential uh, based on price changes in DBY at option expiration, in this example, from a 30% increase to a 5% decrease in DBY at option expiration. So you can see if uh, DVY was up 10% at option expiration, we have a 66.8% return on this option. So even though we're buying an in-the-money call, which is more expensive, you know, a 10% move in the ETF gives us a 66% return. So we're getting a good return even though we're, we're buying an in-the-money call. And if... Um, DVY was flat at option expiration, we'd lose 2.7%. So um, if you buy an at-the-money or added-money call and the ETF is flat at option expiration, that would result in a 100% loss. So uh, you don't ever want to take that kind of a risk. So what we do is we buy these in-the-money options, and then um, we have a, a much less uh, risk of losing 100% of the premium. So, again, if you buy an at-the-money or out-of-the-money call and the ETF is flat at option expiration, that'll be 100% loss. So I'd rather take this 2.7% loss um, if this ETF is flat than 100% loss. So this is a way, this is a trade-off. Your profit potential is less, but your downside uh, uh, losses are less by buying these in the money strikes with uh, less at less than one percent of the stock value. So, again, uh, in this example, uh, DVY only needs to go up thirty-two cents, and we start uh, profiting on this call option. So, a lot of times, if you buy an at the money or out of the money call, uh, it requires the underlying ETF 
to increase 10 or even 15 percent in order for that trade to break even. So a lot of times the stock or the ETF will not make that expected price move uh, prior to option expiration, and then you lose 100 percent of your uh, premium. So uh, the in-the-money call purchases have a much higher probability of success than the at-the-money or out-of-the-money call purchases.